Hey everybody, Big D here. And I'm Liam. Welcome back to another episode of Big D's and Liam's Custom Garage. What we got going on today, Liam? Today we got the Forerunner, of course, Project Apocalypse. We're going to be working on the electrical, trying to sort out the um, aftermarket electrical uh, sorcery that was put under the hood yes. and under the dash and see if we can sort it out or just plain rip it out. So yeah. we'll see if we can do that and uh, get somewhere on the lighting system. Yes. And other accessories, of course, that are going in the vehicle will be hooked all into a universal switch panel assembly, which you'll see. Yes. So with that being said, we're going to roll into it and we will see you back here at the end. Here we go. All right, here we are. Uh, we have some boxes, as you can see, in front of us. Uh, so let's get to it. We're going to open these just to see what's I have a pretty good idea what's in here, but it's all, <laughs> now this is all stuff for the Forerunner, by the way. Yeah, right here. This is all for the Forerunner. Project Apocalypse. Oh. Yep, tape. Yep, more tape. More tape. Big box for something small because Amazon. Yep. Now, as you can see, that's a whip antenna for fire stick. Yep, fire stick for a CB system. Yes. So I guess what what are what's in the other boxes? Yes. Probably something to do with CB systems. Or other or other electrical. Or other electrical. Let's see what's in here. That is coax. Coax for the CB. Yep. And Always want to have a good radio system in your off-road vehicles. So you and can we have communicate. A, we have a bag and a box over a box. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't know why this is individually wrapped. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's your switch panel. That's how you can yeah. see it. This is a switch panel. We can open the box if you want. We're off-roading. Yeah, let's do it. Now, this switch panel is, uh, you guys know, Apocalypse has lights on the front, and we are redoing those, so that is what this uh, panel is going to be used for, for lights and other accessories. Yeah, it comes with all everything you need, even as a, even as plates for mounting, which we have to figure out where we're going to mount this. That's yeah, the that's the other thing. It comes, have... even comes with zip ties. A remote. Here's the actual. Here's the actual buttons, the plate. Look how thin it is. Yeah, so you can literally, instead of having like a regular switch box panel, mm -hmm. he could take that and mount it pretty much on the dash, yeah. center console, yeah. wherever is easy for him to just reach up and push buttons. Heavy duty fuse panel. Heavy duty fuse comes with it. Everything. And this is the this is the box that has all the fuse, if, uh, all the new fuses and everything for it. There we go. And all the wires just connected in there, mm -hmm. nice and neat. Water, water waterproof. Yeah, watertight. It even uh, comes with different yeah. label stickers, so you can yeah. relabel the stuff if you need to. Yeah, you have all all these options for the for the stickers for the panel. So like if you have lights, you take the light sticker and you put it on that button or... Yeah. Yeah. It even has a horn, so you can use one of those buttons as a horn button. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, I might actually... Here. Hey. Excuse Sorry, me. Sorry, got my vape. <laughs> okay, next box. Almost lost my razor. That'd be bad. That we have bad. a backup, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the radio. Oh, CB radio. Get this down. CB radio. Very nice. Cobra. LTD 29 Classic. Yep. Now, and it comes all, and we have also a spring for our antenna, so it, if we hit a, hit something with it, it'll. It'll spring instead of bend and snap. Yeah. Uh, the Cobra radio, we went with these because, as you guys know, um, I am a retired truck driver and uh, 
This is the radio I used to run in my over-the-road trucks, and they are really, really good radio, reasonably priced. Uh, we paid, what did you pay, a little over $100? Yeah. So they're not ex they're not too expensive. I got the most expensive expensive options, of course, because I'm a I'm a princess. But. Yeah, he went with black face. You can get chrome face. Yeah. Uh, there was another option too, wasn't there? Wasn't there white face? It yeah, was there chrome, was chrome, white, or black. Yeah. And this has the upgraded microphone. Upgraded microphone and everything. It has a. It's going to have a nice nice uh, nice. Uh, it, it's fully illuminated face. Yes. So and they're it'll look good at night. And they're an easy buildable radio. That's also what I like about them. If you can find CB shops around that still build CB radios, uh, you can take them and have them upgraded so you can get more range and stuff out of them. So that's yeah. what I'm going to be doing with my particular radio. Liam's going to leave his in stock form. Yeah. Uh, I believe now this radio does have the weather band, right? Or yeah. emergency band channel on it? Mm, doesn't say. At least not on the box. We'll yeah. look into that. Yeah, it's a sure. it's very good thing to have. Not all radios have them, but it is a good thing to have. The emergency band channel is very good because you can follow weather and stuff where you're up doing your yeah. uh, channel nine and channel. Channel 9 and 19, yeah. Okay, so we do have those. Okay. Uh, microphone, that's the standard microphone. It's a good microphone, though. So, yeah. Well, actually, know, this is the upgraded version. Oh, you got the upgraded microphone. Yeah, it's... Okay. It's more open. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to look nice. I like to hang my microphones from the skinny bungee cables off the, off the ceiling because they're right there where you can mm -hmm. just reach out and... We'll figure out where we're going to put everything. Yeah. Uh, once we get out in the garage. Okay, we have a box here. I believe it's the winch. Let's open it up and find out. I would guess by the weight of it, it's probably. Yeah, we had to use a dolly to get in here. <clears throat> we had to bring the dolly to bring in this box. Yeah. So. It comes with, uh, yeah, it definitely is the winch. The, that would be the winch. winch. What um, is the brand? Um, uh, it's an off-brand. I'm not 100% sh sure. It was just a real good price on on, uh, on the internet. I forget the name of it off the top of my head. And how many pounds of coin pass these? Is it 13,000? Oh, that's good. 13,000 pounds. That's a nice hook. It's a heavy-duty one. So far, we got a lot of things going on here already. Um, yes. Assembly is required. Assembly is required. I like the remote. That's nice. Good, nice big hefty remote. You won't lose that. Not wire, but it's thick. Still. Okay. okay. There she is. There's the, there we go. There's the guide. There's the guides. That's nice. Yep. Yeah, there you go. That will go somewhere under the hood. Yeah, we'll find some place to put this. We might have to make a bracket tree of some kind for that, because mm -hmm. that is a very big. Yeah. Thing. Here's the wireless. It does have wireless. Oh, okay. So that has two options. Yeah. Okay. Two remotes, actually. Wow. And there's, here's, I'm not going to lift it out of there, but there you go. Wow, that it's actually pretty compact. It's only a, it's only half the box. That's a nice winch. Yeah, so it'll be able to, uh, it'll be able to be moved around pretty easily. I'll be able to do uh, what I plan to do with it, and you'll see that later. So, yep. it, I have a big plans for this thing. It's something a little different that I've seen, seen being done both in Arizona and on the internet. But uh, I'll show you. I'll uh, share that later down the road. All right. All right. Let's go on to the next segment. Okay. Here we are at the Forerunner Project Apocalypse. We're getting ready to start digging into all the wire craziness that's happening here. Um, as you can see, we have a 
have a big wire right here that is it says cobalt on it, so it's obviously for the amp. That's in the back. Um, we're gonna try to get that disconnected real quick so we can. We don't want the amp. We don't need amps. We're not. We're not bouncing those crazy beats in this in this thing. So we want to get. On top of that, I don't think that amp works anyway. Yeah, and the series system's kind of old and and kind of thrown in here. Um, and, it's just, and it's just an extra power draw, and we have had a little bit of problem with power draw on this here yeah, lately. Yeah, the battery doesn't like to stay charged for long periods of time, which could just be normal old car crap, but I think it's mostly some of the electronics that are in here. Yeah. I'm trying to get this to loosen up. There we go. That yeah, wasn't too bad. That was pretty quick. All right, so we can take this off and put it back on. Or actually, we might want to just disconnect this all together. Yeah, since we're working with electrical. Might want to disconnect them. Although, the lights aren't hooked up to it. Remember, the pigtail's unhooked. Yeah, well, it's, it's fine. We're not, we don't have anything hooked up yeah, to this. Yeah, there's nothing else hooked up to it. Yeah, we don't have any of the lights hooked up. And that's what majorly, what we're, uh, the major thing we're working on right now is getting these lights di di either diagnosed or working prop properly. We did get some power to one. Let's show that real quick. Okay. Um, I can hold the cable and you can uh, flip the switch. Yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll just go like this. Since we took this off, we can just yeah, measure just it right, measure right down there. Back there. Or it probably was written originally. So we can kind of see what's going on with the lighting situation. Yeah, we found this pigtail earlier and they had it unhooked and we quickly figured out why. Yeah. Um, so, see? That one works. The corner, the, not all the lights are working when mm -hmm. you flip them on. Yeah, actually none of them are freaking working. So, so we've only got the one. Mm -hmm. So, as we redo the wiring, we're also going to be diagnosing that and making sure that the lights all work. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Oops. Microphone. Microphone cord. There we go. So yeah. So we can disconnect that now. Yeah. Now we can trace all this back. Or we, we traced it back over to this corner where it has uh, has these fuses right here, these inline fuses for those lights. Yeah, right here. Those yeah. two right yeah. there. The, this bunch of three, actually. There's a third one back there. Okay. So um, let's grab my... Uh, those, of course. Let's grab this and just let's start dissecting that situation. Self-tapping screw, which is just and we won't buried to, in there. We won't have to reuse these because no. the new fuse panel that, or not fuse panel, but switch panel that we just showed you guys already has fuses and stuff, so we won't have to reuse yeah, any, any of that stuff that Liam's removing right now. There we go, and you see that light, that wire's coming right out. There we go. Yeah, now we just got a big rat's nest of wires here. Um, look pretty, see that one's disconnected to something. And we got tape all over the place. And we got more wires. More, oh, quick disconnects. We got quick disconnects, hey. Hey, that. that that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure. There's more, another extreme fuse. There's two more extreme fuse boxes. Okay, so now we know what's going on there. Um, I'm gonna have to get all this tape off and uh, figure out what's going on with that. Okay, ah, there we go. Now we got the whole situation out where everybody can see everything. All right, I'm gonna start dissecting all this and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, I think I got this figured out. So, these black and blue wires apparently were either power or ground, which were, they're all hooked to the same thing, which I don't think is right. And as you can see, this was a, it's a freaking mess. Anyway, the white ones seem to go to the switch. They actually controlled off the, off the, uh, Relay. off the, uh, off the, one of the switches on the inside. And then the yellow, I think, goes to the lights. So we're trying to trace all this out. I think we've got most of it. Um, there's also other stuff going on here. We got this big ass amp wire 
that we have to pull still. So uh, we're almost, we almost got this all figured out. We're gonna start pulling stuff more and uh, start disconnecting stuff. We got all the lights unhooked. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, these are all pigtailed. Now yep. we just gotta do the other side and then uh, we're gonna go from there and we'll see how this goes. Yep, so we will be back with you guys in just a little bit. Okay, I just want to show you what's going on, on the other side of the firewall here real quick. Um, as you can see, these are the wires coming through the dash from the other side. As you can see, it's hooked up to a strobe controller, um, a wireless strobe controller that we have to detangle and, uh, and sort out. Uh, we think we got it handled. We just got to uh, trace these wires into the controller and disconnect them, and that should disconnect uh, all the wires and we can get these out of here and pull out the firewall. Then we'll go from there and see if, uh, what, what else we can eliminate and do some, do some testing, disconnect something, reconnect it, see what happens and uh, map out what's going on here. And that's pretty much it. Okay, um, last week we promised you new tires and here they are. These are the Nitto Ridge Grapplers, okay? Uh, they're not a full mud tire, they are an all-terrain, but they're a very aggressive all-terrain. Um, these are LT-295-75 R16s, and they're a, over a 33-inch tire. Um, they're a little bit over. Um, I tried to get closer to 34, but they didn't have anything that really fit the bill. Um, but these are really great. Hardly any road noise. Um, is what I was looking for because I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of road driving um, on these particular tires. Um, maybe if I ever get another vehicle, I'll retire. I'll get a full mud terrain, but um, I'm going to be driving a lot on the street. This is going to be my daily driver, so I need something that will uh, perform a little better on the road. That being said, these are not uh, lazy tires when it comes to the dirt either. Uh, as you see, they're very aggressive uh, tread on the side here and even on the edges. The pattern in the middle reduces road noise. If you get a close look at it, it's deep. It's still a little aggressive. Um, they're riding the, the edge between a mud, t a, uh, a mud terrain and an all-terrain. Um, I'm very happy with the tires and I can't wait to see what, how they uh, perform on the trail. Well, guys, welcome back. So, uh, yeah. I don't know what really to say. It's, no, we went pretty far. Uh, yeah. We got all that crap out of there. Yeah, that pretty was, much. We got everything out. Um, that was it, a nightmare. It was a nightmare. It really wasn't doing anything, and the wiring was patched together at best. Yeah. Uh, mostly speaker wire, and yeah, it, uh, it was a, it was a mess. It was just a mess. Yeah. So. Needless to say, as you guys saw, we've got the nice new switch panel and stuff, so all these lights and all that are going to be completely rewired, going to go with the right gauge, right coloring of wire, so everything is nice and copacetic with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to get that winch mounted. That's going to be... Uh, yeah, the winch is going to be nice. Yeah. Um, and yeah, all the other all the other lights in the in the correct positions that I want them in, and yeah. it's going to be spectacular. Um, we're going to have lights going in all directions, um, so wherever the, situ wherever the situation, we're going to be able to see um, everything around us. So oh yeah, it's, it's going to be really great. Yeah, I'm also thinking about getting some um, uh, rock lights, some mm -hmm. under some under lights, just to see uh, so I can see what's going on underneath the vehicle too. Yeah. Well, like I was wanting to do with uh, um, Dark Matter, I wanted to do something similar with the pod lights, but mount them up inside the fender well facing yeah. down. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. So you can also check out your suspension to make sure nothing's up in it, or binding, or whatever. Break, yeah. Broken, you know, mm -hmm. it could come handy. Yeah, I wanted to cut the holes and kind of mount them flush. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Recessed. Yeah, recessed. But All right. Yeah. Um, you have something else to share with us. Uh, yes, I do. 
Switching, right. switching gears from Project Apocalypse is totally different. Yes. Thank As you me. guys know, we've been saying it for weeks, parts coming in are slow and it slowed us down with the motor build for Dark Matter. Well, we have good happy news. Our right pistons finally showed up. Yeah, we got the correct pistons for the job. We had, we had, we had uh, pistons that weren't quite right. So. Yeah. They needed to be floating wrist pin, and the ones that Summit originally sent to us were press pin, and were not going to work for our application. Yeah, they, sh they should have known, they should have caught it, they didn't. Yeah, so it took forever to finally get a hold of them and to do the return. Now, I will tell you guys, these are a quite a bit step up from what we had originally. The original ones were Summit brand pistons. These are Keith Black's, or KB's for short. I'm familiar with KB's. I ran them in a uh, Trans Am back in the late 90s in a race car, and they are a very good piston, and they've come a long way since then. So, huge upgrade. Um, from what we were originally putting in there. So it's got this extra channel. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, between the top ring and the secondary ring, there's this really cool extra channel, which is awesome. And it's got a little bit of a dome to it. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, two valve reliefs instead of four. But yeah, true flat tops. So the motor is going to scream and we will finally be able to get it back from the machine shop and start assembly. They'll be able to finish the balancing now that we have the right pistons. So that was what was holding us up, if you guys were wondering. So we've got that part taken care of now. So now we just wait on the machine shop to do what they need to do and tell us to come pick the stuff up. So I think that's pretty much it for this week. Yeah. So yeah, next week we will be still working on the electrical on Project Apocalypse, trying to get all that sorted out. And get the CB, everything installed, and we might get to some other things, but we'll have to talk about that and see what, how far we can get. Yes. So that'll be next week. Yes. Oh, and if you guys were wondering, in our electrical system, if any of you guys were fans of the strobe system that was on here that we showed you in the earlier episodes of when Apocalypse came into our lives, they are now no more. Yeah, that's we, out of there. Yes, we've completely eliminated the strobe kit, so no more strobe lights. So yeah, uh, yeah. So we will see you guys right here next week. I'm Big D, and I'm Liam, and we're out.